When it comes to aircraft choices, Airbus and Boeing dominate the market and have done so for decades. How did this duopoly come to be? And how have Boeing and Airbus taken on the competition over the past years? Let's look at the histories of the two companies and the other plane makers they've outlasted to achieve their positions. Boeing's rise to dominance comes firstly from its history and long experience in the market. The company was started in 1916 by William Boeing under the name Aero Products Company. It soon changed to the Boeing Company and became a leading supplier to the military. The Boeing Company developed itself mainly as a supplier of military aircraft during the First World War. Boeing's first expansion outside of military operations was with airmail. The first commercial aircraft, the B-1, operated mail services across the U.S. with several contracts from the U.S. Post Office. In 1930, Boeing took its airmail services further with the Boeing Monomail aircraft, firmly establishing Boeing as a shaper of the aviation industry. Boeing launched the Boeing 247 aircraft in 1933 and was the first practical passenger aircraft built, accommodating 10 passengers. Operating from New York to Los Angeles in 20 hours with seven stops, the 247 may have started the era of reliable and comfortable passenger travel, but the Douglas Aircraft Company, formed in 1921, also contributed greatly to the industry. If you're liking this video so far, why not click subscribe and hit the like button? Oh, and be sure to click that notification bell too. As a response to the Boeing 247, Douglas designed and built the DC-2 in 1934. Soon following was the improved DC-3 in 1936. Analysis by the Smithsonian indicates that it was the first profitable passenger aircraft able to operate passenger services without cargo or mail subsidies. Just over 600 passenger DC-3 aircraft were built. This success was well noted by Boeing, who went on to work closely with Douglas and would eventually take them over. Boeing did much better with early jet aircraft than it had with its first passenger propeller aircraft. Learning from the problematic de Havilland Comet, the Boeing 707 first flew in 1957 and is widely regarded as the start of the successful jet age. The company took this further with the 727, launched in 1960. The 737 launched in 1967 and has been the best-selling commercial aircraft to date. Boeing made some great design choices with the 737, including twin engines mounted under the wings and a wider fuselage, increasing passenger and cargo capability. The 747 was a game-changer for larger wide bodies. Launched in 1970, the Jumbo Jet was a collaboration between Boeing and Pan American World Airways and was two and a half times the size of the 707. The 747 not only pushed the size and performance of aircraft, but also changed the economics of aviation, opening flying to more passengers. Since the 1990s, the development of new Boeing passenger aircraft has largely been about efficiency, lower emissions and better fuel consumption. The 787, for example, delivered a great deal in this area and was a highly successful aircraft for early orders. Today's duopoly in aircraft manufacturing is characterized by a notable lack of competition. Acquisition is part of this, and the most important example was Boeing's merger with competitor McDonnell Douglas in 1997. The merger of Boeing and McDonnell Douglas created the world's largest aerospace company and combined the last remaining two large American aircraft manufacturers. Following the merger, Boeing offered an even larger range of aircraft. The MD-95 became the Boeing 717 and passenger production of the MD-11 ended. Let's move on to the other half of our aircraft duopoly, Airbus. Airbus has its origins back in the 1960s with several European manufacturers looking to come together to take on the much larger US manufacturers. Manufacturers and European governments realized that collaboration was needed to take on these companies and share the cost and risk of production. In 1965, UK-based Hawker Sidley and French manufacturers Brejou and Nord Aviation began working together on plans for an Airbus aircraft with a capacity of over 100. Other French and German partners soon joined. Airbus industry was formed in December 1970, with French and German manufacturers each owning a 50% share. Airbus's first attempt to compete with Boeing was with the A300. 
A joint European effort, France would lead the construction of the cockpit and central fuselage, while wings were manufactured in the UK. Other fuselage sections came from West Germany, flaps and spoilers were made in Holland, and the tailplane in Spain. The launch of the A320 in 1987 secured Airbus's dominant place in manufacturing. Airbus looked extensively at what Boeing had already achieved with the 737 and set out to beat it. Airbus was also well-placed to take on Boeing in the wide-body market, something other competitors never did. It launched the A330-A340 program in 1986 as an innovative approach to design two aircraft together. It went on to launch the A380 to take on the Boeing 747, and it has done that to some extent, winning several customers and selling 251 aircraft. Airbus's latest program, the A350, has done well against Boeing and the 787 and 777, securing large orders with major airlines around the world. Although not as dramatic as the Boeing McDonnell Douglas merger, Airbus has also seen competitor acquisitions as part of its growth. In 2017, it took a majority stake in the Bombardier AC series program, which eventually had the aircraft rebranded as the Airbus A220. This gave Airbus access to a segment it only barely touched before with the A318. Boeing and Airbus have had great success, but from very different starting points. However, there have been other notable manufacturers over the past 100 years which have made various attempts to challenge the two giants in different ways. Lockheed Corporation was a promising commercial aircraft manufacturer in the 1960s and 70s. It launched the L-1011 TriStar in 1972, promising to be one of the most advanced jets. While it was a great aircraft, sales unfortunately fell short of expectations. Lockheed left the commercial aircraft manufacturing business in 1983 and merged with Martin Marietta in 1995 to form Lockheed Martin. It's now mainly focused on military and defence projects. UK-based de Havilland was established in 1920 and was a leading manufacturer of military and civilian biplanes through the 1920s and 1930s. The de Havilland Comet was a groundbreaking passenger jet aircraft launched in 1952. Unfortunately, it had some serious problems. Most notable were issues with its fuselage, windows and pressurization. By the time de Havilland improved this, Boeing had launched the improved and ultimately much more successful 707. De Havilland became part of Hawker Siddeley in 1960, which later became part of BAE Systems. BAE Systems, of course, is still going strong today and is one of the largest defense and aerospace companies in the world. British Aerospace, the forerunner to BAE Systems, developed the BAE 146 regional airliner and this has carried on with the Avro RJ. Douglas Aircraft and McDonnell, both successful aircraft manufacturers, merged to form McDonnell Douglas in 1967. Douglas had already had huge success with the DC-2 and DC-3 and the new company went on to produce several important aircraft, including the DC-8 and the DC-10. McDonnell Douglas was the largest remaining competitor to Boeing and Airbus. It was a successful company and could easily have further challenged the two giants. Many of its aircraft are still flying today, although it no longer threatens the duopoly. The Canadian manufacturer Bombardier expanded into civilian aircraft in 1986 after establishing itself in the rail transportation sector. It began with the Canadair Regional Jet CRJ program. This program did well leading to the development of the CRJ-700 in 1997. It also expanded with acquisitions including Learjet and de Havilland Canada. In the 2000s, Bombardier launched larger aircraft, the CRJ-900 and CRJ-1000, and then the 110-130-seat C-Series. Sales of the C-Series were slow, some say due to insufficient marketing, as well as developmental delays and increased costs. The C-Series situation got worse when a large order from Delta Airlines led to a trade dispute launched by Boeing. The duties imposed by the US Department of Commerce gave little option for Bombardier, and Airbus took over the C-Series program in 2018. The increased funding and marketing ability boosted sales of the C-Series, now known as the Airbus A220. Along with Bombardier, Brazil's Embraer has been a leading manufacturer in the regional jet market. 
Founded in 1969, it's the third largest civilian manufacturer today. Embraer has excelled in the production of mid-size regional jets. In 2018, it led the market in sales of sub-150-seat aircraft, with 100 operators of its ERJ and E-Jet aircraft. It has pushed new developments with the E-195E2, which offers a capacity of 120 to 146, firmly competing against aircraft such as the A220. In 2019, Boeing announced a $4.2 billion deal to take an 80% stake in Embraer. Similar to its actions with McDonnell Douglas, Boeing would control Embraer's aircraft development rather than compete. Unfortunately, this deal fell through in April 2020, with blame on both sides for the failure. Several countries, most notably Russia and China, have tried to compete in the larger aircraft manufacturing market. Chinese manufacturer Comac has already launched small and mid-sized regional jets. In the larger narrow-body market, it offers the C919. This has the capacity and range to take on the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320, and it likely will do so. As China's aviation market grows, a Chinese-built alternative could be a popular option. Russian plane maker Urkut is developing the MC-21, an aircraft which is built to have superior seat-mile economics to the Boeing 737 MAX 8 and Airbus A320neo, even though it does not match the range of these competitors. Most of the current orders for the MC-21 are from Russian companies, but there is also interest from airlines in Egypt and Azerbaijan. Competition in the wide-body market is further away, but Russia and China are developing the CR-929 together. This will take on the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350, with a capacity of between 261 and 291 passengers and a range of around 12,000 kilometers. The Chinese-Russian consortium has stated that it hopes to take 10% of the wide-body market within 20 years, but it's hard to tell if this will actually happen. Do you think aviation would look a lot different if companies like McDonnell Douglas or de Havilland had survived? Do you think Russia and China can catch up to Boeing or Airbus? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.